What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So today is a very exciting day because I finally got my hands on all the wide body pieces I need to convert my car to an OEM wide body and this would not have been possible without the help of my friends over at Wesley Motorsports. So thank you Kevin Wesley for helping me get these parts. So I know you guys are dying to see this so I'm going to show you. All right guys here is all the parts completely laid out. So the first piece I'm going to show you is of course the uh, OEM front bumper. It's pretty much like a regular bumper except it's got the slots and cutouts here for the lower portion of the flare. I did go ahead and get the front uh, lip reinforcement with the new uh, OEM front lip. One of the more difficult parts to get was this front fender. So you can see I've got the flare uh, laid out on top of it. If I just remove it, there it is. Now I do have both sides. I just laid out one side of the car to show you guys. So this fender will completely replace that fender and of course the flare will bolt into that so this entire fender and front bumper will be removed so the only thing i'm keeping is my hellcat hood and that is already oem next thing i got is the uh, lower uh, rocker molding got it taped up because i actually already finished putting this oem rear flare onto the back of the car so i got this taped up because i mounted it first and then i got my measurements to put the uh, rear flare on but I'll be going into detail here real soon I just didn't want to film all this until I got the last uh, missing pieces some other parts that I did go ahead and order on my own include the clips that go into these holes that go into the OEM flares so more about that later all right guys, let's not waste any more time and jump right into modifying the rear quarter to accept the rear OEM flare. All right, so it's raining outside, but that's not gonna stop me from starting. And I'm gonna start by removing the rear flare because these are the ones I need to customize. So I'm gonna remove the rear flare and this bottom flare piece right here because before I figure out where the OEM flare goes, I need to put the uh, rocker molding on because it finishes off this bottom uh, flare right here. Then I'll be able to put the OEM flare here and we'll get our uh, correct alignment. So it's actually not easy pulling these off, the ones that are glued. You can kind of hear it cracking here and there. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, goof off just along here, along the edges. Hopefully let it soak for a little bit and they'll be able to uh, pop off. So I'm gonna get started on that. All right, man, that was, that was tough. That was not easy to pull that puppy off, but this uh, industrial strength goof off right here uh, definitely did the trick. It actually softened it up and it made it like real gummy-like and I was able to move the flare back and forth and it uh, was able to come off. Now, I said this once, I said it before, anytime I work on something, I like to clean the entire area up. So you see it's freaking filthy under here. So. That's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna completely clean this. I am gonna remove these lower flares too. I just don't want them to interfere or get in the way. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and work on this right here. Get the rest of this glue off, as you can see. It's uh, extremely hardened. And once I clean all that up, then we'll tape it up and uh, we'll get started with all the uh, more difficult part of this. All right, update. It is nighttime, but it's not stopping me, all right? I'm gonna keep working here. So as you guys can see, I had all that glue on there. It did take some of the paint off. Again, not worried about it. We're wrapping the car this go around. Later in the future, we'll get this bad boy painted. But for right now, I want to do a, want to do a new color, a new livery. So anytime you wrap anything underneath, the wrap will show imperfections. And that's what we're trying to avoid right here, right? So anything that, uh, any of that dried glue that was would show through the wrap, I'm sanding that down. Uh, just getting rid of all those bumps and everything. I removed as much as I could, uh, but what was left and what was still bumped up, uh, I had to sand it down. So I'm hitting it with, what am I hitting it with? I think it's 320, 
is it 320 grit? 320 grit. I mean, I'm folding little pieces of sandpaper. Um, and then I'm going to hit it with a thousand grit to make sure it's super smooth. Um, but it's just along that line. It's nothing crazy. I just don't want any of this stuff to show through the wrap once the car does get wrapped. So let me show you what I'm working with. Oh man, this is everybody's nightmare. It's so crazy. Anyways, <laughs> so I just got a little piece of sandpaper, right? And I just folded it and I'm just lightly sanding back and forth like that. Once I hit it with a thousand grit, we'll go ahead and do it wet, a little wet sanding to make sure it's super smooth. As you can see, I got most of all that glue off. It's just a couple, this, this right here, and then this was another hot spot. Uh, this right here, most of that already came off. It's nice and smooth, can't feel anything. So that's what I'm working with right now. A little piece of sandpaper, jump up to a hundred grit, clean everything. Then we'll be able to tape everything off and start getting our measurements uh, so I can drill the holes for the bolts and fasten everything in place. Again, it'd be sweet if we could put a new rear quarter panel on this, but that's just not going to happen with my budget. Not this time around. So I'm going to get back to work. All right, I just want to show you guys the final product of where I'm at at this stage. And that's, uh, get all the glue off. It's nice and smooth now, nice and clean. Minus, of course, my missing paint. Um, but you won't even be able to see any of that, so I'm not too worried. But yeah, just be aware. If you're going to glue your flares like I did, it's like a permanent thing because once you rip them off, this is what you have to look forward to. Next thing I got to do now is put up the rear, excuse me, the lower rocker molding from the OEM uh, car. But because I've got the uh, yellow Jeep here in the way, and it is late at night, I don't want to move the Daytona and I don't want to crank this thing up so late because that's just not neighborly. So instead of waking all my neighbors up in the middle of the night because I want to work on my car, I'm just going to wait and do it tomorrow um, and make some headway. So the thing I'm going to do right now is actually uh, put the tape on these, uh, on these, on this <laughs> rear quarter. That way when I put the flare on there, I can trace it out and uh, get all my measurements. I can't put the bolts, got the bolts to put into the back of the OEM flare and JB weld them in place. Can't do that yet because I need to uh, be able to put the flare up against the car and trace everything out, but we'll dive more into that tomorrow. So I'll see you there. All right, it's the next day. It's a beautiful day outside, literally, night and day difference right got the challenger out of the garage and i did pull off the lower side rocker moldings and the lower piece of the vicrest flares to finish off the full flare so i pulled out the new oem wide body uh, lower rocker molding that finishes the flares it's all one piece now and i'm just comparing them so i'm going to show you guys the differences if you're trying to do this for an older gen uh, challenger like i am so let's take a look all right so you can definitely see that this is the old one right some subtle differences uh, you can see this is a little more uh, pronounced versus this one. Uh, and the other difference is that this has two clips in the front. I don't know if one broke off. I don't think so though. But the rest of these clips are relatively in the same location. As you can see, the OEM wide body one has the some extra clips on the bottom portion of the plastic. So I gotta see how that is gonna line up. As you can see, when I flip it over, it finishes the uh, lower portion of the flare on the front and the back right there. So looking at the Challenger over here now, you can see I got everything off and in true fashion, I'm gonna clean all that up real quick before I start putting this lower uh, rocker molding piece on. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a final, like complete installation uh, because really I'm just trying to get this line so I can do that. Um, so anyways, let me figure it out. I can see that this lower panel doesn't have the extra holes for the lower uh, plastic pieces, the little plastic push pins. So let's see how this lines up. All right, so I taped it up in blue because I'm so close to this concrete, I don't want to prematurely scratch brand new parts but i'm sure you guys hear so these clips are clearly the exact same over here this one has an extra a guide pin but no hole on my car the hole is somewhere around here not there um, i'm not going to drill any extra holes into the uh, body especially these little rocker panels i know some of you know that this is filled with foam and it just traps moisture very well i don't think an extra hole would hurt but i don't think it would make it better so what I'm going to do is just trim this guide pin so this clip can go into its little home right there. So that's one. 
and then it'll allow this to be a lot closer. This extra clip right here also needs to be removed. That one's gonna line right up. Uh, so far, it looks like the bottom clips have nowhere to go. Uh, so I need to figure that out, either remove them because the last lower rocker panel didn't even have them. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and these holes look like they're gonna line up perfectly. So not a problem there either. So looks like for this side, right? The back of the car, I need this to line up so I can place the flare correctly and go from there. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to come up with something for these rears. I don't exactly want them to not be clipped in and I don't wanna drill or make new holes in the body, but I might have to because it doesn't look like I'm gonna avoid it this time. So as you can see, those bottom clips right there have nowhere to go. That's the last thing I want to show you guys. But again, those, you know, they slide right out and they get removed. So it's not gonna be an issue. So let's go ahead and uh, get back to the drawing board. Either remove these or drill, see what I do. All right, update. I trimmed the plastic clips and the guide pin up there, up there. I trimmed it off. Uh, so this would sit flush, as you can see in the back. Everything lines up, but I'm not clipping everything in total place just yet. I'm just, what needs to be held on. Like for example, it's gonna need the clips here. But the uh, clips that I trimmed off, I'm gonna JB weld them back on to here in the uh, corresponding places. Uh, the bottom here, I'm just gonna hold it up just like that, right? Grab some tape and hold it in place. I don't wanna use up a bunch of plastic rivets where I'm gonna take this off again. And I'm gonna line up this uh, rear flare now, trace it out and uh, we'll go from there. All right, it's a little tricky, but this is going to be the most time consuming part because we want to measure once. I totally, just, <laughs> we want to measure like six times and cut once, right? So I'm going to show you guys my gaps right now, the way I got everything lined up. I'm probably going to have to ask Ashley to come out here um, so I can hold the flare in place so she can trace onto the uh, blue tape. Um, so right now it's kind of loose, but as I push on the different parts that are loose, everything lines up. Um, the way I want it to look. So this rear flare on the rear bumper was straight up in the way. The alignment was different. Uh, so let me show you that. All right, as you guys saw me using the blue tape to hold everything in place. Again, glue pulls paint, don't forget. All right, so we've got this lower piece lined right up. And as you can see, this part's, I'm gonna put my finger back there because I'm gonna secure it from the uh, back side. So as you push it and make it flat, lines up perfectly and that's what we're looking for, just like that. See the tape's not holding it completely in place. Um, and over here, I was worried about, they didn't want this hanging, overhanging. It's gonna have to be like right there, right? And that's what we want because if you got this back piece too low on this body line, the other flare won't be able to sit in here. But that's what it's looking like right there. Pretty pleased. And this has a lip that literally overhangs on this uh, fender, as you can see right there. It doesn't go completely flush up against it because then it'll lift this back one up way too high. So that's why we want it. Let's go ahead and trace out our shape and go from there. Alrighty. Got our shape traced out. And you're probably wondering why are you tracing it out? You already cut the car, right? That part's been done for a while. Basically, coming back over here to the flare, it's time to measure, right? So I'm gonna put, got some hardware that I'm going to JB weld right here in the center of each of these um, pockets right here. Now there was plastic clips that go into the rear quarter panel of the OEM car, but we don't have an OEM car. So I found some bolts, some hardware that are gonna slip right into here. Gonna JB weld it, let it dry. But we gotta figure out how we're gonna drill. And like I said, this is where a lot of measuring comes into play. 
So we're going to measure from the center of this hole to the top of the flare, right? Now, when you measure, there's maybe, I don't know, a fraction of a centimeter from the trace line versus where the flare actually is. I try to really angle the pen down so it's as close to the top of the flare as possible. So we're going to measure on the plastic flare on here from the top edge to the center of where the bolt's gonna be coming out. A lot of measuring to be done, but once I measure this and drill and everything goes into place, I can just trace that template, flip it, and do the other side. So this side has to be absolutely perfect so we can make a workable template. Um, as you can see, I did this a long time ago when I was trying to get OEM wide body parts and failed about a year and a half ago. Uh, these pieces protruded way too much and I had to shave them down. I used a Dremel, uh, shave them down so that the flare would sit flush up against the car. The ones that weren't protruding or weren't interfering with touching the surface of the car, I left them there. And I'm really happy that I did that. So basically it's time to measure. So center hole, top of the flare, take that measurement and mark. So I got to put the flare back up on the car, but then I got to mark where each bolt's going to go. So this is going to be a long process. We're going to get it done. Again, there's no instructions or book on how to do this the uh, right way, but my boy Rome Lowlife, man, you guys got to check him out on YouTube. He did this with the Vicress kit. It took him, I think, a little more effort because he had to create pockets on the aftermarket flare to put bolts into, but that's where I got the idea from. Uh, it's worked great for him. His kit's been super sturdy. He had to do it on the front flares and the rear flares because I went OEM. I only have to do it on the rear. Now, you could say I'm kind of lucky, but this is like the hardest part. So, but yeah, let's get this template done up the correct way. That way I can just flip it on either side and we can move 10 times quicker. All right. So as you can see, I just haul it off the little hole right there. And then two hands here, two hands. I measured where the center of the hole is gonna be. And I marked it with the pen as you can see right there. Then I drew the center of the line up over the tape. So then I put the flare back up on the car. And there are my tick marks for where each hole needs to be, right? So then, so then I'm gonna measure from the top of this line that exact measurement down, right? Then draw a little circle, center punch it, draw a, uh, drill a small hole through it. So I'll probably start with one here, one here, butterfly, one here, uh, one here, and then the very last one down there, uh, just to make sure stuff starts uh, lining up correctly. So, that's gotta be a good sign, right? Like, like we're on the right path, buddy. Blessing this. Yeah. See, he's measuring for me. That's what he's doing right now. That's what he's doing. It's a pretty butterfly. See you later, buddy. All right, let's get to work. All right, guys, so I did what I said I was gonna do. I measured up. I drilled three holes, one at the very bottom, one towards the middle, and one at the uh, very back of the flare. And everything lines up great. You know, my measurements correctly, it's looking good. But I ran into one little problem, right? And that's that not all the bolts, you can put fasteners behind them. So there's no way I'm gonna cut away any more of this car, right? So let me show you. All right, so the first bolt that I put in was this one. And I did this one down here and the one in the back. See, so they're not fastened, but as you can see, everything lines up pretty good. And there's the bolt right there and then you just and then it would be fastened starting with this one down and these no it's these two in the back you can't reach you can only pretty much put fasteners on one two and three from the back side one two i just lied it's just these two right so then one two and three four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You can't put fasteners in the back. So I did what any sane man would do. <laughs> I jumped on YouTube and Google uh, and I found Judas Garage, You huge channel. You guys might follow him. 
um, and he put OEM parts on a non-wide body uh, Hellcat. And what I saw he did was he drilled holes big enough for the OEM fasteners to clip into. And I've got one right here. All right, and this is what they, uh, this is what they look like. Now, the clips that I have right now are for my front flares to clip into the OEM front fenders. So that means that I need to order a boatload more of these uh, so I can drill holes big enough for these to clip into the holes that I can't put uh, fasteners behind them. So that's gonna be the plan. That's what Judas Garage did, worked out great for him. Uh, so I'm just gonna buy the missing uh, clips that I need, but I'm still gonna fasten uh, the ones that I can. So I probably won't completely install this flare uh, until after we wrap the car because I don't wanna risk I mean, you can just buy more, right? But I don't want to risk breaking these little things and having to buy them again. So I'll probably just take the whole car in pieces to get wrapped. Uh, that way, once it's completely done being wrapped, we can just clip everything into place and fasten everything into place once versus fastening everything right now and then having to blow it apart again. One thing I did not order was the these flares right here. Uh, you can see all the paint's gone, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I don't think I'm gonna buy these. I'm not sure yet. So for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as is and then uh, clean all that up, get it ready for wrap, and then see what I decide to do after that. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, this side up, drilling all the holes. Everything's lining up perfect. All I gotta do is trace this, flip it onto the other side, and uh, drill some more holes. But yeah, definitely gonna jump on uh, East Coast Moparts and order me a bunch of these. So you just gotta drill out the hole a little bit bigger and then the plastic clip will go right in. And like I said, I don't wanna waste these because I know once they're in, they are freaking in. Um, so I, I tested it, right? So I got that smaller one to go at the bottom. Um, made the hole just big enough where like right before you push it in, but I just wanted to make sure that it actually clipped in and boy does it. So I'm not gonna officially clip these all the way in until the car is wrapped because that's gonna be a nightmare. But got the holes all drilled out. And then uh, the ones where I can't put fasteners on the end, these I can reach from the back right here. I'm gonna use these uh, blue clips and now I gotta get this one out of here. <laughs> all right, so here's the flare with the one, two uh, stainless steel uh, screws and one plastic clip here and another plastic clip there. So you can see these are still coming out because they're not fastened, but I also put, so there's nothing holding the flare here, but once I put those plastic clips, it'll definitely hold it in place. And this bottom one is clipped in, as you can see, it's not coming out. So I would say that is a successful uh, OEM wide body rear uh, flare installment. There's a little gap right here. Uh, I'm just I'm a little worried that I won't be able to close it up. I might even have to refer back to some, a small little bit of 3M tape right there when everything is said and done. But I mean, it's, it is clipped into place, man. So in order to get it out, you gotta really pull, especially on these back ones, you see they're clipped in. So from here down and from here back, it'll be the blue plastic clips. So I didn't wanna not test it because, you know, knowledge without mileage is, it's bull, it's not real. So we know that it works now. Tested, it's true. So once we get everything, so once we get everything 100% in place, that is what it will look like. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna put any of this stuff on until the car is wrapped because even uh, before we wrap it, we gotta take this bottom piece off because I don't want any orange bleeding through. We wanna wrap the car correctly. And of course, the front flare and the front fender, all that's gonna be replaced. So we're not gonna mess with that like anytime soon until after the car is wrapped and all the pieces are wrapped. We're just gonna swap everything over and then be done with it. But the rear, 
pretty happy man it's looking good i'm gonna go ahead and start taking all this tape off cleaning all that residue off i do need to take the rear diffuser front splitter off before we take it to get wrapped so i got some work to do all right guys so next thing i did was jb weld the two bolts in place i did trim the clips and just moved them over let that jb weld set in place as well i hope that works if not i'll come up with something else uh, the last thing i did was clean up my mess over here clean the side of the car uh, so everything's nice and clean lower uh, rocker remove that got everything clean everything scuffed up i did go ahead and take the metal burrs off of the holes so they're nice and smooth as well so basically now i gotta start this side so that's what i'm about to do turn the car around rip this apart all right so i just doused it in a goof off and started separating right away i just want to show you guys how strong this stuff is all right the glue i mean like i am pulling on this <laughs> and it's buddy if you're wondering if the glue holds there's your answer It's like someone's been doing burnouts. <laughs> it looks like this little like nest I got going. <laughs> what the frick is that? Is anybody home? No? Okay. That's not a fire hazard. All right. <laughs> so as you can see, it takes quite a bit of force to get this off. But, okay. This is all from burnouts. <laughs> all this up so we're on the passenger side of the car here got the holes all drilled out uh the metal's different on this side i can't get to the back of any of these right so the initial idea i had to put the bolts like i did on the driver's side to fasten it uh yeah that went out the window so i'm gonna have to use all the blue clips right so as you can see once they go in there to get them out you've got to destroy them and that's kind of what i was trying to avoid but i got to make sure this stuff fits right so I want to show you guys, sacrificing a few clips here, just to show you guys that it does clip into place. So I just spread them out a little bit. Um, and so one, two, three, four, and five clips are gonna get sacrificed because they don't come back out. I don't know if you could hear those audible clicks, but 
So this one, one thing I did already do on this passenger side is turn this puppy over. The shape of the back right here doesn't let it uh, reach that all the way. So I've got to trim it there. And I know I've got to trim the front a little bit as well because when it hits the car, it won't let that clip reach on the very bottom. So this is what it looks like. And I already trimmed the other one. So I got to trim this one in the back and in the front. That one got pretty close, but as you can see, it's just a little bit that won't let it clip in. Uh, but it does clip in once I trim this bottom piece right here and let the flare get closer to the car. But yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna work. So now I gotta pull that puppy out. As you can see, got a lot of tension on it. Yeah, it freaking works. So trim the bottom, trim the bottom in the front. Gotta trim the front on the driver's side and then we'll be good. All right, after some trimming underneath here, and over there, uh, I was able to get it seated. Of course, I don't have clips up here. Got one here, one here, one at the bottom, one in this corner, and it's pretty much sturdy. Um, that's gonna work. Now, one thing I wanna show you guys is, oh yeah, I want to show you guys this bottom piece right here. Of course, it's not clipped all the way in, but we're gonna be aligned just right. Real happy with that. Uh, one thing you can notice is that the radius of the Vicrest flare where it's sat, it's definitely bigger than the OEM flares. And I can also tell by the way they come this way. Uh, these are a little less aggressive, the OEM ones are. The Vicrez ones would hide this uh, tire a lot more than uh, the OEM one does. So it's gonna give it an appearance of being a little uh, thicker, but nothing's really changed except the uh, width of the wide body kit. So. Yeah, that's one thing to notice again. All that's gonna be wrapped, all that's gonna be covered. I'm not really too worried about it. That part's not clipped in yet because I had a, I still have to put the new clips in their corresponding spots. And then of course you gotta use some plastic rivets here in the rear to hold it into the sheet metal of the car. Right there in those two holes, so that'll keep that in place. Again, not gonna put any of the stuff on, just gonna go get it, take it to Ish so he can wrap all these things and uh, get the car looking right. So I'm gonna take the car with as many things as possible off of the car uh, to include the flares. All right, last thing I wanted to do was switch out my Demons with uh, the BFG, because these are 315, uh, 3018, so the sidewall is a little smaller. As you can see, I could wrap pretty much my whole hand, touch the wheel. My Nittos are 315, uh, 4018. Bigger sidewall, it's huge. And I just wanted to see how it looked, man. It looks pretty good. There's no spacers on here, but you can see how much uh, wider or how much fatter these tires are. I did raise the car. I used to have it lower where the fenders were pretty much close. The tire was close to tucking for that, like, you know, hardcore fitment. But with the rear diffuser being so low, you can see all the scrapes on my driveway. I used to scrape at the very bottom. So I decided to, uh, raise it up all the way around because my exhaust scratches uh, hits the driveway as well. So that's why I cut the car because when I had it lower, they were definitely hitting. Um, but this should be clear. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna lower it. Probably not because of my driveway situation here. Um, but it does look really hard when you close this gap up because we got like four fingers of gap here. So, but yeah, the 315, the the nitto on there looks really good. So really pleased with all the work I've done the last couple days, just ready to get this car wrapped so it looks nice and clean. I decided I still had a little life left in me. I'm gonna take off those stripes. Man, you really can't see them. I'm gonna start taking off these uh, carbon stripes. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Uh, I don't wanna make this a full length, like hour and a half feature episode. So I'm kind of breaking everything up in bits. The most important thing was getting those rear flares. Uh, mounted on the car it wasn't too difficult got that done the next step is going to be taking all these parts to ish so they can all be wrapped once everything is wrapped bring the car back here and completely assemble the car in its final oem wide body form hey john Sorry, mate, Scott. yeah gotta love your neighbors right 
So once all that's done, bring the car back here and we're gonna start wrapping it. Uh, probably in the next couple of days, I'm actually gonna remove the stripes because uh, we don't need the stripes anymore. Remove the two Hemi emblems on the hood. Uh, try and take the car there as naked as possible so we don't spend a lot of time taking it apart to wrap it. Want this thing in and out. So that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. If you guys like these videos, hit that like button, leave a comment below. If you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. And again, huge shout out to Wesley Motorsports for helping me get all these parts and getting this car looking right. So until next time, guys.